Greetings, family. Greetings. Greetings. My name is Ianifa Shangokolade. I'm a Tinue Ekbe Nihun, Pamela Nguyen. Acknowledge the name my mother gave me in respect to my ancestors. And quite frankly, I have my ancestors to thank first for being here among you all, and it has been a blessing. I have learned so much from each and every one of you that I've had the opportunity and the blessing to interact with. So I am very, very grateful that I took this journey. My personal journey starts many, many years ago because I'm older than probably anybody else on this, in, on this bus. So my journey started a very long time ago uh, when I was a child and I learned that my grandfather had escaped lynching. He, um, he was a, he had worked as a sharecropper until he was in his 40s and he finally got enough money together to uh, get a college education and go to medical school and he was practicing medicine in his community where his baby sister had died uh, many years before because there were no black doctors and no white doctor would treat her so she died of a broken arm something as simple as that and that is something I have always carried with me that was what it inspired him to actually, after he escaped lynching, his uh, brothers defended him with, they armed themselves and defended them from the, him from the lynch mob. And he was able to escape to Dallas, Texas, where he built hospital, he built a hospital and a medical center for black people. So I always say, at my age, I'm like, I still haven't gotten to the bar that he said, he said such a high bar for me. I'm still working on that bar. And for my personal mission, for about the last 20 years, it has been an African sovereignist mission. And when I talk to my little children, my little uh, school children that I sometimes have the blessing to be able to be in their presence and talk to them, and I ask them, what is African sovereignty? And they always say, it's when we're in control of all of our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and I say, okay, what's all of our stuff? And then they tell me, our medicine, our food, the jobs that our people hold. So they are like really, really clear. So we got the kid, the children are setting the bar for us. Yes. Because that's it. So I dedicate myself to things and activities that move us toward African sovereignty. I don't waste my time on certain activities that everybody thinks is a popular activity. We need to go out and march right now or something like that. Anything that doesn't move, the, my North Star is African sovereignty. And anything that doesn't move us toward African sovereignty, I don't waste my time with. So I could say that my grandfather was my first inspiration. Um, my second inspiration was Marcus Garvey, because Marcus Garvey was an African sovereignist. I mean, he really, really built. I have studied his work, and had it not been for the betrayal that happened to him, he would, we would be much further along than we are now. So as far as inspirations are concerned, and who my influences are, and there are many, many others, John Henry Clark, you know, not, I can name, there are, long list of Chancellor Williams, but in terms of putting the ideology of African sovereignty to work, the best example on our side of the Atlantic to me was Marcus Garvey. I can say how uh, Nkrumah started out and Julius Nyerere, especially in Tanzania, is another yeah. great example yeah. of a sovereignist. But this is what we have to go for now. We can't go for, can we fit in? How can we fit in? Who's gonna, you know, who's gonna do the right thing so that we can be a part of American society? We gotta go for our own. We really do. So, from that standpoint, I guess you could call me an African sovereignist. That's what I would think of myself as an African sovereignist. And I'm all about 
the Pan-African vision of, you, of unifying the globe because that's where we will get, get our greatest power. And surely we will have to build up to that. Um, so, you know, that's just, all you have to do is just really say, okay, what is my North Star? My North Star is African sovereignty. And everything that you do from who you marry to who you spend your time with, to who you, you know, what foods you eat, your exercises that you take, ask yourself, does it contribute to African sovereignty? And if it doesn't, go to, you know, moves to something that does. So that's one as aspect. And finally, um, one of the things in order to have a truly sovereignist attitude that I made the decision to do was to jump off the Christianity bandwagon. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Give up the crack cocaine <laughs> So, um, <laughs> I did that, and I have been practicing Ifa, and for those of you who are familiar with Ifa, you know, we've all, they've been under colonialism and enslavement, the people that, you know, the priests and so forth, so there are issues, I would be the first person to tell you that there are issues even with the African spirituality community. But what I will say is that I'm not responsible for anything they do. I'm responsible for what I do. And so I have made the decision to be, to walk the righteous path as far as African spirituality is concerned and only to practice in the light and only to apply it in ways that are gonna build our people. And my first trip to Africa was back in, and this was on the African spirituality path, path was back in 1999 and I've been coming back, 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 back um, regularly since that time. And I was initiated into Jango, which is an African deity for those of you who may not know, and also Ifa. Um, and the, um, the, we, the reason it happened, and I'm not even gonna get into that because it was a prophetic dream that I had that led me to even look in this direction. And I, um, and actually, what I did, because at that time, I was like broke. <laughs> I didn't have no money. I didn't know where I was going to get any. But I did have a job, I'll say. But it was a shaky job. And what I did was I set up an altar for my ancestors. I put a few pictures of ancestors that I had pictures of on the altar. I started celebrating them, singing to them. Uh, asking for them to help me get home to Africa. And before I knew it, and the, and the other thing I did, the other thing I did, there were days when I only had change in my pocket. And I would put that, whatever change I had, I would put it on the altar. And before I knew it, within a couple of years, I had all the money I needed to make my first trip to Africa. And I have never had a the period since then that I didn't have enough money to come to Africa. So if we do the right things by our ancestors, then we will have their blessings and their support, as well as the African deities, um, to do the work that we have to do. So on that note, I want to thank, thank the staff of Africa for the Africans for making it possible for me to make another journey. And uh, and again, thank all of you for your openness and kindness and responsiveness on this journey.